All right, so let's have a look at how we can kind of troubleshoot one of these scenes. Um, that's using my ASCII a bit more as well and see how a bit deeper of the connections. So what I've got here is I've got a very simple scene where I've got a locator and I've got a cube and the cube is basically just getting um, a multiple linear so that as it's the translate Y from the locator multiplies by two and goes into P cube one. So that's the only thing that's really happening here. So you can see it's just doubling the uh, translate Y movement. Now let's just save this out as just uh, lock to cube. And let's open up this in PyTerm again. So as I mentioned, you can see here, we've got all of these create ones here, but um, let's just search immediately for our cube. So you can see here, oh, sorry, I've got match case on. That's why I couldn't find it. One thing to note here as well, while we're at the bottom is that one way that you can figure out if a MA file has finished writing out from Maya is that you will see this at the end of it. We'll say slash slash, which is a comment uh, in Mel, end of lock to cube MA. So we'll say end of and then the file name. So if you don't see this, if you saw a file like this, uh, that's an indication that Maya didn't finish the process of saving out the file unless somebody's been in and actually tampered with this. So if you, if you save out a file and Maya crashes and you're wondering, oh, did it actually save out everything correct? If you open up the MA file and you see that it's missing the slash slash end of file name, then there's a good chance that your file is corrupted somehow. So that's just something to be aware of there. Now let's go back to our cube. So you can see here, this is where it starts. So first off, it creates all of the nodes, right? So we can actually see here just above, we have our locator that's created and we have our cube. So let's just continue down and see what else we can see that's related to our cube. And I'm just going to use the full name just so that we can find things a bit easier. So you can see here, we actually get down to the line of where it says connect attribute. So this is actually where it's taking all of the created notes that it's done and actually starts connecting up the different things here. So let's see what we can actually see more on this multiple linear. So if I just go backwards, so you can see the, the kind of first time that we see this is when it's created. And then what happens is that the output of this is connected to P cube one translate Y and if we go down, we can see the locator one dot ty linear is set. It's connecting into the input one, and it does a couple of extra things here with the some background Maya stuff that we don't really need to worry about that much. So let's just see that that was everything. So you can see here as well. One thing that is important to know. So you can see here when it creates it, it also sets the default value for the node. So this was basically, if I go into the multiple linear, you can see that the input two, I set that to a value of two. So this is basically where it's saving out that information as well. It doesn't happen in, in like later, like set attribute. If it happens here, it, it does it right on the node creation. So if you were, for instance, needing to, you were trying to open a file and it, it was just taking too long because you, you put on like a, a wrong attribute or envelope, you can go in here and try and find these, um, these values where they're being set and change them. And um, that might be able to, to help you, um, on like node creation time or, or remove where it's actually setting them. So, oops, sorry. So let's just go down here as well. And that's pretty much it, right? So let's say that 
we had something that was going on. For some reason, we needed to change the the name of pcube one. All right. So let's just say that it actually needed to be really cool cube. Now, this might be obvious for some people, but now that I say this, and if I try to open up this again, you're going to see that we actually get our really cool cube, but we also get this unknown ref node, foster parent one. And you can see that the really cool node, uh, sorry, really cool cube is actually just an empty group. Now it's in the correct spot for what was happening where, where this was saved out, but it doesn't have the cube shape. The cube shape is now back to the origin. So like, and neither this nor the really cool cube has any of the, the connections from the multi double linear. So what's happening? Well, let's just have a quick look if the script editor can give us any insight. So let's just open it again. And yeah, it's not really giving us much. So we got to go dig deeper. So let's see why this is happening. So we know that anytime that you get an unknown ref node, that's usually coming from, if you've never seen that before, the most common way that you can get that is if something's parented into a file that's being referenced in. And so let me, I can just show real quick. So if I reference in, this, let me just do a new scene here. So if I reference this in and I parent something underneath this. So this object was created in this scene, but it's actually parented to a reference. Now, if I remove that reference, that parent is gone. So you can now see that to kind of maintain the hierarchy and the, the placement of this, uh, Maya created uh, our foster parent. That's just to kind of keep it in the same spot because Maya doesn't really know where to do it. So it recreates the hierarchy for it. So that's basically the same kind of behavior that we're seeing here. It's getting an unknown ref node. So let's go in and see what can happen. So we know that this is where we create our transform and that's coming out nice, but then let's see what happens with the, the actual shape of it. Well, this is where it's happening, right? It's trying to look for a parent and the parent is still the old name, which is P cube one. And this is the, the kind of the, the tricky part and where you have to be really, really careful about starting to mess with these files because everything is hard coded. There's no kind of variables to go in and be used. So you can't just like change one thing and have it cascade through the whole thing. So we still actually now have to go in and change this. So now save this and let's try and open this file again. And cool. Now we actually have this. So we have a locator. We've changed our name to really cool cube. We still have the same name of the shape though, because we didn't change the name of the P cube shape one. Now moving the locator up and down is still broken because you probably guessed it. We still have a bunch of references to P cube one here. Well, we have that one, which is coming out of the multiple linear. So let me just change these. I'll do, uh, oops, sorry. I'll do a uh, replace and I'm just going to copy our name up here from, sorry, where was it? Transform side shape and da, da, da. there we go. Uh, and then P cube one. So I'll just replace all. Oh, uh, wait. 
Oh, this is finding in a bunch of other files here now as well. Uh, I don't want that. Oh, sorry. I was uh, was searching through all files instead of just the one here. Cool. So I'll just replace all. And if we now go here and we open this cube again, sorry, the file. And now everything's working. We can see that we still have that connection coming in here. So that's just some like a quick little introduction to the MA files. This might be something that you will never ever have to use, but I think it's a really, really important tool to have in your back pocket that can be really, really helpful in production. There will be times where you're kind of pitted up against a wall and scenes will break or somebody will reference in something or they will change a, a file that's referenced in somewhere and suddenly people aren't able to open their files and a bunch of these things. And being able to open up these text files because um, even though you know, a Maya file, depending on your project, might be up to like a gig or several gigs. There are still text editors or ways of opening up very large files that can still allow you to browse them. And if you already know the issue where, you know, oh, I just need to change this one reference to another, then the fix can be quite easy. And with that, I hope this has been sort of interesting, but again, I'm not expecting you to go in and I would, I would actually highly advise against just starting to go in and start messing with these things. But again, it's really important to understand how Maya actually loads up files and if you're getting any issues when you're actually opening up files, how you can fix that if Maya keeps corrupting things.